For this lesson, we'll be going over logic gates. This will be more of a refresher course to get reacclimated with all seven gates and their operation. So let's jump right in and start looking over every single gate, starting with the AND gate. The most popular gate in the digital world is the AND gate. It's very likely you'll see this gate used along most of your problems and examples throughout your studying for the PE exam. So it's best to understand how it works. All inputs must be high for the output to be high for an AND gate. So if you have multiple inputs, such as three input, four input AND gates, all inputs must be high for the output to be high. In the majority of your textbooks and PE review books, usually you'll see a truth table of only two inputs, as you see here. And this one also says if both inputs are high, the output is high. It's best to understand the operation because you will come across three input, four input AND gates. So it's best to understand the operations more than the truth tables. And when performing the Boolean algebra, AND gates are translated to multiplication. So our example, we have A times B. So our inputs are A and B. That would give us an output of A times B. So let's go to the next one, which would be our OR gate. It seems that the OR gate is one of the simpler ones to remember how it works. If any of the inputs are high, the output is high. So all you need is one of the inputs to have a one for your output to be a one. Hence the term OR. If A is on or high or B is high, then your output is high. And in looking at the Boolean algebra, the OR gate is symbolized by a plus sign. So A plus B is the equivalent of an OR gate. And just like we talked about earlier, your textbooks will show and usually show a two input truth table. This next gate will be referred to a NOT gate or an inverter. In some of my practice problems and examples, most likely I'll refer to it as an inverter. Due to the fact that it inverts the input. That's simply state how the operates. So if you have a high input, it will give you a low output and vice versa. Looking at the Boolean algebra, all it does is invert your inputs. So I have a A naught for an A input. Very simple. This next gate is a particular special gate. It's a universal gate, also known as the NAND gate. A NAND gate, all inputs must be high for the output to be low. This is the opposite of an AND gate, basically. It just has an inverter behind it. And I call it a universal gate because it can be used and converted into other gates, which will be going on over in later lessons, such as combinational logic. The NAND gate in a Boolean algebra expression will be A times B and then not over the output. And just like we talked about earlier, you can have various inputs, three, four inputs, and then multiply together with not over the whole equation. So we're going to go over our next universal gate next. The other universal gate is also known as the NOR gate. Just like the NAND gate, we can put the NOR gate in various combinations to make other gates, which we'll talk about in combinational logic lesson. But let's go over the operation of the NOR gate. All inputs must be low. For the output to be high. Shown in the truth table, both, of them, both A and B must be low or zero for a high output. And this is expressed in Boolean algebra as A plus B and then not over the whole equation. Same thing as an OR gate, however, it has an inverter at the end, hence the bubble. So now we're going to go to our two exotic gates. I refer to the remaining gates as exotic due to the fact that they work and they operate in an exotic way. Plus their uses would be used in very unique manners. So let's go over the operation of the exclusive OR gate. An odd number of high inputs will create a high output. So if you have multiple inputs, you count the number of highs and that will determine your output. And this is translated to Boolean algebra with a plus sign with a circle around it. So anytime you're doing an expression, that's what that gate would translate to. All right, let's go to an exclusive NOR gate. Our other exotic gate is known as the exclusive NOR gate. Similar to our previous gate, it works off the number of high inputs. But instead of odd number of high inputs, this one has an even number of high inputs to give you a high output. So I have AB equals zero gives me a high output because that's still an even number one. Zero is considered even. Same thing with at the very bottom of the truth table, A1, B1 gives you a high output. 
in the Boolean algebra, similar to our exclusive OR gate, it has a plus sign with a circle around it, but this one has a not going through the whole equation. Do that little bubble right at the end of your gate there. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the practice problems to get our feet wet. All right, for our first example, we have an AND gate and one OR gate. I'm going to go ahead and I'll add some inputs over here. That way we have at least some understanding. And we have an X. So just by using our operation and truth tables, let's go and attack this one gate at a time until we actually find our output. Just by understanding our operations, an AND gate to have an output of high would require both inputs to be high or one as well. Well, both my inputs A and B are one, so this would create a one output. Now we can attack the OR gate. OR gate operation is if any of the inputs are high or one, it would create a high output. Well, I have a low input on one, however, I have a high input on the other. The AND gate supplied the high input. This would create a 1 on leg A, which would create a 1 on our output. So for this one, x would equal 1. This example, we have one OR gate and one NOT gate, or you, this will also be known as an inverter. So let's go ahead and fill out our inputs, same as last time, and we'll see if we can come up with output. So for this one, I'll pick, let's do 1, 0. Well, OR gate operation. If any of the inputs are high, that would create a high output. So since I have at least one high uh, input, which would be a one, create a high output of one. And this is going to an inverter. Inverter does exactly what it says. It inverts your input. So if you have A, it would equal A naught. And if you had A naught, it would create A. So for this one, we have a 1 as an input, or a high input. So we have a 1 input, we have to invert that, give us a 0. So, an inverter just create our 1 to a 0. And actually, and this would also mimic, if you look on our truth table, this would make it a mimic a NOR gate. Because that one bubble acts as the inverter. Let's step it up to a slightly bigger problem on the next one. Now this one looks like a fun one. This one we have two OR gates, one NAND gate, one NOR gate. Hmm. Well, let's start by filling out our, uh, our inputs. I'll go ahead and throw in some random numbers here. Now let's throw some zeros. We haven't had enough zeros in the last one. So just like last time, we're going from left to right, and we're going to attack it one gate at a time. So this one we have one high, one low input. This is an OR gate, so as long as one of your inputs are high, it would create a high output. It's going to be a 1. Same song to reverse. We have another OR gate. One low input, one high. That would create a high input. Now this is a NAND gate. We have truth tables you can refer to, or you can refer to just how the operations work. If both inputs are high, this will create a low output. Well, I have one of my inputs as low. So this will actually create a high output. Now something like this you refer to your truth table, but it's best to understand the operation of how these gates work. I'll explain why on the next problem. All right, so the last one we have is a NOR gate, and the inputs are shorted together for the output of the NAND gate. And in other lessons, you'll find out this actually acts as a different gate. We'll talk about that in just a second. So I have an input going into a NOR gate. Well, the NOR gate operation, if any of the inputs are high, it would create a low output. Well, both of the inputs are high. So this would create a low output. Now, as we stated earlier, this mimics a different gate. When we do combination logic in our later videos, we'll talk about how the NOR gate is one of the universal gates, and when you short the inputs like that, it actually creates an inverter. We're not going to go into details like that right now. That will be on uh, one of the later videos. However, that's what we just created by shortening those two inputs. All right. 
And again, we could have referred to our truth tables when trying to determine these outputs. However, on this next problem, we're going to talk about why it's not always great just to refer to these truth tables. For our last example, we have a three input exclusive NOR gate. As I stated earlier, I won't be able to use my truth tables when trying to find the output for this particular type of situation. By understanding the operation of gates, I can have any amount of inputs and determine the output without even looking on a truth table. Well, for a exclusive NOR gate, the operation is the even amount of highs or ones would give you a high output. So if I have two ones, it would give me a high output. Very simple. I can say, well, I'll go ahead and delete this real quick. I can add another input right here, another input right here, and say one, zero, one, zero, one. And do the same thing, and just count one, two, three inputs. That's an odd number of inputs that would give me a low output. It's best to understand the operation of how gates work. Later on you will see three input gates used in other uh, problems as well as in PLDs.